Hey, this is Jim Malcolm with Humanized Technologies, and I am back again with the fabulous Peter Simcoe. Peter, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. It's uh, great to be here again, and today we're actually in the Lake District in Cumbria, in England. Say, every time, yeah, every time we come into spaces, we end up going to amazing places. So this is this is not where. Uh, we could find like the Loch Ness or anybody like that. There's right? no Loch Ness in there, although I'm sure there's a few. I'm sure there's a few critters in there, but no, this is Cumbria. It's on the way to Scotland, so you're on the way to finding the Loch Ness monster, but we're not quite that far north in England yet. So uh, yeah, okay. this is uh, this is about a week ago, and actually, what's quite nice about this is the what's the it wasn't sunny. You actually get quite a dark. I combined several photographs. Um, I took an exposure for the sky, um, and then combined it with some. Uh, re other exposures and produced quite an interesting sort of brooding sky there that goes with the uh, the interesting skyline. And I was thinking when I was taking this, incidentally, that if you did have, if it was bright and sunny, you'd actually have really harsh shadows everywhere. So it, it would look great, but it actually works well when you've got a fairly sort of flat, uh, when you've got fairly flat light on it with the grey sky. And if you get some, if you get the sky nicely exposed, it really can be you know, a pretty nice image, even though it was effectively quite a dismal Sunday afternoon. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah, so not getting too technical, and we can talk about all this kind of stuff yes. later on, but a lot of times when you have bright sun and dark shadows, right, the, the dynamic range or the range between your brightest spot and your darkest spot is so great mm -hmm. that it's really hard to compress it. But when you have overcast, you have less of this uh, dynamic range difference and you can get a better overall exposure. But yeah. we've got some tools we could talk about later too with like things like DNG and, and manual controls that will yes. help all of that. But we can get to that later on. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, uh, so what have you been doing in the last few weeks, Jim? So I've been busy on a couple of different projects here in the, here in the States. I think uh, probably the most exciting thing for me is I've just started launching a series of three blog posts right. where I'm talking about doing time lapse uh, or what we actually refer to as multi-lapse in right. uh, headsets. So although I'm not going to talk about that today because we haven't released all three of those episodes, uh, okay. next time okay. we get together, we'll go back into that whole conversation. But uh, watch on uh, the Humanized blog, where we'll start talking about multi-lapse video and how to basically play with time in, mm. uh, in a VR headset or in 360. Where's the views? Where's the Humanize uh, blog? Where can they read uh, about you know it? What? So they can go to views.camera. OK. Um, I think it's this way, right? It's on, I have it on it's there. <laughs> right there, right on your T-shirt. There you go. Yep, and then just hit on the blog, and you'll start to find stuff in there. If you haven't signed up for our email yet, make sure you sign up, and then you'll get notifications when new blog posts come, blah, 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 blah. Yes. But Great. for us, it's about trying to continue to educate the market, help people to understand how to use the tools, and do all the ma the amazing and magical things that that uh, you've been able to do with the cameras. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yes, uh, it is it is useful to read blogs because you, you find out, and even like the Facebook uh, user group, because you find people doing so many different things that you didn't know the camera could do. And uh, so it's an important part of, of people's daily reading, really, or weekly reading, just to keep up with, you know, what are the, what are the manufacturers doing? Who have they been in touch with? Um, and it's uh, yeah, it's a useful way to keep in touch with what's happening out there with, uh, with well, with the views camera, with any camera really. So uh, so yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. Well, you know what I want to do? I want to. I don't want to throw you under the bus for this because it <laughs> comes down to uh, to making sure you have a camera with you and using it when you have it. Uh, so I'm not going to throw you under the bus, but yeah, I'm going to throw you going. underneath the Lamber. <laughs> I'll throw you underneath the Lamborghini for a minute. Okay. Because. Yeah. What an amazing car that you got to drive in Barcelona. Ah. And just why don't you gloat about that for a minute? Because <laughs> I, I, I just have to live vicariously through you. Well, I got to drive. I went to Barcelona for about six days. And if you ever go there in the shopping center, you can hire a Lamborghini for about <laughs> 70 euros. So there's me and the little Lamborghini. Well, not so little Lamborghini, actually. The only thing I would say is driving for the first time on the right. And driving a massive uh, 510 brake horsepower sports car is quite a challenge when you're driving around uh, the harbour area of Barcelona. So that, that's all I'll say. You know, um, you might, by time you actually get used to the width and the size of the car, uh, your 25 minutes is up. But it was, it was fun. It was fun. And um, yeah. However, off camera, for about sixty pounds. So about sixty pounds, twenty five dollars, and you get to drive around. Yes. Yeah. 
um, carefully, I, I... very carefully. And you might want to, <laughs> but you have to show your license. And there was somebody sitting in, actually, I think I, I'll show some video after anyway, but the, there was someone sitting in with me as well from the company, just to make sure one, I didn't drive off into the sunset, but also he was very helpful. And uh, he was, he, he helped me sort of navigate some of the traffic. As I explained to him, it was my first time driving on the right in a 510 yeah. horsepower uh, <laughs> vehicle. So, uh, so yeah. And Jim, off camera, so you, you, shift, you, you had a shift with the right hand. Uh, no, it was it was paddles. It was paddles or automatic, okay. and I put oh, it on paddles. automatic. Oh, nice, nice, nice. So, uh, so yeah, okay. it was flappy paddles on the steering wheel, or it was automatic. But I'll be honest, it's nice. um, it did, uh, it didn't feel that refined. I mean, that's I guess that's what these sports cars are about. But it felt quite sort of rough and ready. Um, it reminded me, I would like, <laughs> I'd like to say, it reminded me of my old MX-5. I used to have an MX-5 Mark One with pop-up lights. I don't even think this has got pop-up lights. So, you know, the MX-5 had something on it. But um, it was very raw and it felt like you were driving a cart around a, a sort of karting track. But, um, but yeah, a lot of fun. And that's I was, awesome. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the only grief that I'm giving you is I know, I know. Use a 360 camera next time. Come I know, on, I know, I know. So, uh, so I created some video. It was actually the security video they give you at the end, uh, and it was just wow. here. But there's a whole, there's a whole body to sort of put uh, the 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 views or or similar camera on. And um, I'm I, sure, I'm sure they'd have no problem with you mounting a suction cup to the what. Two hundred fifty thousand dollar paint job. Uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So hopefully, when you take the suction suction cup off, it doesn't pull off any of the paintwork. But we'll leave that for we'll leave that for you to experiment with. It's uh, you know, so uh, yeah. That's awesome. Okay, great. So fun. that was that. All right. So you've been traveling. You went out to Barcelona, yes. and I also happen to know that you also found your way uh, into this, this the, the city of London, right into oh, downtown, yes. for something called Views of London, which we recently hosted out there. Um, yes, and we brought in a bunch of influencers and um, bloggers and you know filmmakers or whatever. Mm, and mm. Got to people got to experience uh, the Views camera and, quite frankly, 360 or even VR. VR 180 for the first time. Yes. And so I got two questions for you. Um, one is, of course, how was the experience? We'll get there later. But more importantly is when you met people who are experiencing for the first time what you're doing with the technology for a long time, what did you, were there any insights that you saw or anything that you learned that was interesting? Um, I think, I think, the, the, the day was really, really interesting on several levels. I think it was interesting to see people you know opening the the views uh, camera for the first time and wondering and asking questions you know what does it what can you do with this how do you operate this what what happens with this but what was interesting in terms of my own personal experience was i saw uh, people using the views camera in a way that i i hadn't before and that was to take the output and use it in a way that it's not the end output of video is not in 360 or, or 3D, it's actually converted. Take the whole 4K picture and convert it for something that can be played on a TV. So it becomes a HD uh, video where after the event, you can go back and you can select the part of video you wanted. And, and that's something I, I haven't really experimented with very much at all in terms of all the 360 cameras uh, and 3D cameras, also, all that sort of thing that I've that I've had. So for me, it, it was a, it was great to see people experimenting on that level because it added, well, it was inspirational to me, but it also seeing them do that added another kind of tool to my toolbox in terms of the way that I create content, both on a personal project level, but also a professional level. So if you wanted to give almost the impression of a drone, say you put it on, on a selfie stick or one of the extension sticks, or even two of them. I mean, I saw there was one guy who, who was attaching uh, two or three kind of sticks together <laughs> and then holding the camera right up in the air. And suddenly it yeah. creates, you know, brand new camera angles and brand new effects and this very stable um, video that you get from, you know, the Views XR, for example, where the stabilization will create a very smooth video of a selection of that entire uh, video that you captured and, and it was very inspirational on a separate note I mean it was really interesting to meet influencers I've I've I spend time in the design world I spend time you know uh, with, with different clients manufacturers uh, different people so 
it's an entirely different world and I'm normally the media producer for them. Suddenly you're in, you, you, you're talking to people who also are in media and are, are dealing, you know, with huge audiences of, of millions actually and, and huge numbers of views, um, when I say views, spelt with an I-E-W-S, um, <laughs> on, their, say, on their YouTube channel and that kind of thing. Um, and it was a really yeah. interesting insight to, to how these people operate, what their agenda is, what their motivation is, and what their inspiration is. Uh, so, so yeah, it was a very interesting day. So aside from, aside from just the 360 and VR and stuff like that, did you walk away with new inspiration or insights that you can apply to your business? Yeah, well, that's what I was saying. The, 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 the 2D, sort of HD 2D video that people were experimenting with, yeah, I, I, I'm absolutely yeah. looking for that opportunity now. Uh, with manufacturers and and well, not so much looking for the opportunity, but I know it's there. If I get, you know, if there's a need to create a stable shot that's higher up, or you know, yeah. uh, with the experiments that I did on the day, and I actually have a couple of of videos from the day. Um, yeah, I felt like I'd learned something new, so it was very valuable uh, as a, as a day, and it was it was very interesting. And I met some of the views team as well. I met some of the humanized team. Met Raz. I uh, met Mike. Uh, Mike, Eugene, yeah. I don't. Eugene helped me with the video last summer, um, which uh, it was the the journey. He was helping me with some of the green screen oh, stuff, yeah. um, so I'd already had a bit of contact with him via video uh, connection. But um, but yeah, so it was nice to meet those guys as well, um, and uh, yeah, it was a very enjoyable day. Awesome, that's a great. I mean, it, it's the fun thing about Humanize as a company is we just got great people to work with and stuff yeah. like that around the yeah. world. So, you know, this is a call out to everybody that's watching now. If if you want to get involved with us and spend some time learning more about the category and everything, just reach out, put in comments down below, send us an email. Um, we love to learn from what you're doing, but we also want to help you build the things that you want to do as well. So um, we'd be happy to work on that kind of stuff with you. In fact, uh, I'm working on a blog series right now about multi-lapse video, which is Kind of a new form of time lapse and hmm. i won't get into all the details but next time i come on i'm going to share with you uh, some of this 2d uh, work as well as some time lapse work and everything because what you can do during that playback so i can make a, a time lapse of a sunset for example and then i can apply a very slow kind of little zoom or pan on that so what happens when you play it back is it looks like you had either a zoom adjustment or you had a um, uh, some sort of a slider that's moving the video so to end and you get this extra dimension uh, out of the video so uh, awesome stuff and really cool cool things to talk about we'll do more of that next time mm. would you like to see a couple of the videos from from the day from yeah, the views of the day okay what we'll do Absolutely. is we'll, let's, just, and, uh, let's just drag our camera around and we can see screen let's just put it's like this is like theater in the park right so we're going <laughs> to put the screen out by the trees and off we go so this is ali law and as you can see for me this was the first experiment i did let's just leave this looping for a bit what's interesting about this video is that i had the camera in my hand but you can't really see what's going on there you can't see the selfie, the selfie stick or the extension stick, whatever, is invisible in the yep. shot. And that's a really interesting thing because uh, it just looks like I'm running along. It, it doesn't look particularly odd. But then what I've done is captured a little bit of that, but then also selected a sort of really wide panoramic view of Ali Law, slowed it down in After Effects. And it's a, it's a little bit of pixelation occurs, but uh, that's down to After Effects more than anything else. Um, and um, yeah, just creates an interesting shot. That was down near Carnaby Street, famous street in in London. So we, uh, Ali and uh, and the crew were causing mayhem there for a bit, extent, putting extensions on extensions and running around. And uh, but, uh, if, yeah. if you've ever looked at his, go go to his site and watch his videos and stuff. Yes. he's uh, he's one of those guys that make my palms sweat because he goes up yep. on tall buildings and yep. jumps off and does all kinds of stuff that. I simply don't have the courage to do. Well, as I said, uh, as I said, there was Ali, and then there was uh, there was James James Kingston. I think James Kingston uh, is his name, and uh, spent the morning with him. And uh, as I said, uh, he explained what he did. I didn't appreciate who he was at first. He said what he did, and I said, "Oh, you're one of those guys that makes me sick on Facebook, but not in a bad way. As in, you know, uh, it's amazing what you do, but I just can't watch it for very long without feeling really, really ill. Basically, this guy will hang off cranes, he will lean over tall buildings, and do all sorts of 
stuff that yeah. I couldn't really, you know, wouldn't dare to, wouldn't dare to do. Same with Ali Law. I mean, again, these guys are these guys are pretty out there uh, in terms of uh, what they post on their YouTube channels. So, uh, you were going to say Absolutely. something, Jim. You were going to say something. Oh, I just going to say that next time you're leaning uh, over a bridge or looking off of something, next time we come on, I'll uh, I'll give you some shots out of a hotel window. Ah, uh, yes, that I did, which yeah. is really really kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a fantastic example of taking 360 and turning it into 2D. Yes. Now the one thing I did want to point out uh, on that particular video mm. was you don't need to put it back up. Okay. Is that you, well, you can put it up if you want? That's fine. But in that case, you chose uh, to use a very wide angle, yes. right? Yes. But you could have just cropped in also to just yeah. a small part and track his action as well. I actually like this cinematic effect because it yeah. allows me to show everything that's going on. I love the sun back there in the background and everything. Yeah. And when you slowed it down, but that's the magic of being able to capture everything in your shot and then turn it into a 2D. And I was working with somebody yesterday who called this a flatty. Ah, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. You can out, you can output a flatty, kind of that old school stuff for social media or Facebook space, or not space, but Facebook uh, stories, yeah. Instagram, those types of things. Yeah, yeah. Really fun. Yeah, yeah. So good example. Yeah, I mean, I again, without adding you know too much unnecessary detail, I did want to you know make sure some of these little lamps and things were in. Uh, you know, my my ego dictated that I should probably be in the shot as well, just for a matter as a matter of interest, actually, because just to show the camera, well the camera. <laughs> uh wasn't or the 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 selfie stick wasn't visible so it was just it was just uh it was a bit of fun and just trying trying that out and seeing partly how wide you could get the sort of video to appear without it looking odd or or, or being uncomfortable to view yeah you know and um Good point before you get to that awful fish not awful that awfully yeah. wide um fish eye effect so yeah yeah and that selfie stick we actually call that the magic selfie stick hmm. uh, because the because the stick seemingly disappears so ah okay okay it makes like a it basically is like a floating camera and you're yes. right put yeah. some extensions on it and next thing you know in fact uh this last time i was in new york i actually bought um a boom handle from a mic ah. so you know the mics uh mic booms that uh, sound guys carry mm, mm. I, I i got one of those that's nine feet long so three wow. meters wow and you put the camera on the end of it ah, and, and then nice and it moves nice and smoothly because it's got weights on and it's got different things like that and exactly it's, yeah, okay 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 yeah so you can just use the boom itself and walk around with it or you can put it on the stand and you can yeah. do all kinds of stuff which so, which creates even really more fun. so not only have you got the the sort of smooth effect from the stabilization you now have extra stabilization uh from a man in a manual in a mechanical sense right. i guess um let me just show the other flat flatty i sure. guess we're, we're talking about flatties flatty. now so another VR content and 360 video so, 360 imagery uh so this is me presenting I, I like uh, it was raz raz kaplan kaplan it really kaplan. allows you to uh, place yeah. yourself he was interviewing me or he was with me uh, when we so recorded this visit, so it's really just talking about views of london it was talking about the event space, itself but you get chance to look all around yeah. the camera that kind of thing well, so again case, these were the first videos only recently that i'd ever created well flatties the first flatties before that always looking to create 360 360 video uh 360 video or or photographs um and that let me just show you a couple of other um whilst we're talking about 360 photographs a couple of other photographs from the lake yeah. district i'll just pop these in just to show you what happened so here's another let me just let me just rotate this round in a different way let me see if that ah there we go so let me remove the some interesting some interesting roots just below us we have no legs to tread on these roots but <laughs> what was quite nice about this image is there's quite interesting roots just down there and again wow. i was using i used three photographs exposed for the sky exposed for kind of the ground here and just combine them it was a, it was an interesting way to you know, represent what it was is. what was a fairly dull and uninspiring uh sky and inspiring day really and it, and it really you know the the nice flat light does allow some of the color to come out if you look over here with the green so i know that we're south of scotland right now but yes. if you look right out there i think that's nessie you can, like you think, literally i'm not even i'm not even kidding you think um, nessie might have moved home to yeah out over the water what are those three what are those little ridges oh, that are out you there you mean here just here there's some here 
Yeah. Uh, I can't see what you're looking uh, at on okay. that one. Okay, okay, I can turn the turn the camera around. Ah, this yes, way, okay. Now we and can. then I can point it here. Yeah, yeah. Look at the right. look at that. Look at that. It's right, right there. Yeah, yeah. That that could um, easily uh, be. There's. I think you've gone to something you know there, what? Jim. The only reason you caught that was because it was shot in 360. You weren't yeah. aiming to get it, but you got it. Yeah. So this is the amazing thing about when you shoot in 360, you get things you otherwise would miss, and we just missed right there that. Nessie. That Nessie's actually relocated down here. Down, down to Keswick. Yeah, Nessie's down there. Down to Keswick. Yep. Keswick in this the lake. This is what's district. happening. That's why they can't find. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so again, interesting what happens when <laughs> uh, when you yeah, when you're looking the other way. So who knows? Who, okay. kn who knew? Who knows? I am great. All right, let's uh, let's see what else you got. Oh, ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, back yeah, yeah. Here. Let me just uh, let me just bring the table back. Great. Uh, we got... I love these trees. These trees look great. Yeah, it, again, with the different exposures, it uh, it comes out nice. It really does bring a level of detail out. Uh, just quickly, another one, another one from here, just showing a little bit more detail in a, in a slightly different place. So now we got the chair. Uh, so again, just a second shot here. Let me just let me just check. Can we still see Loch Ness? We still see Nessie. Now there's some birds now. There's some birds going on. I think maybe Nessie's moved over here somewhere. So, um, okay. So there's that one. And I think there's something to that. <laughs> Let me just uh, show you a couple from Barcelona. So now we're in Barcelona. This is my trip. This is the pre Lamborghini days. So there's, there I am. <laughs> Let me just flip this around. So here we are playing chess. Let's just. Okay. So got, Take this table off. There we go. Playing chess just there. So giant chess pieces. And bring it around. So you know that it would be a really fun thing to do. I don't know if we could do this. What if we did a live streaming 360 of a chess board where we let the viewers choose the moves? Ah. How fun would that be? Yeah, yeah. It might fun. take a while to get the whole thing or um, organized and done, but that would be kind of fun. So on Facebook's ah, on Facebook Spaces, I guess you could, if you bring the bring the table back in, you could have some little pieces here, and people could send messages. Is that is that what you were meaning? Yeah, live yeah, exactly. on Facebook just, Spaces, just a live a, chess game. Yeah, a live chess game where people can see the whole board, and then we would just use the uh, the messenger for people to put in the the the. The moves Points of where we want to be. Do you know what this right? is perfect so we can for? Go through and label our base. Remember, What's that? remember, Star Wars Episode Four, the very first one where they're playing the chess game. <laughs> what we need Facebook Spaces. What we need Facebook to do is build some little animated creatures, and then we've got our very own Star Wars chess game. Right I there. Pretty much guarantee you, it's probably already in the works. <laughs> Somebody has somewhere, to be doing that. somewhere. They've got they've got Vader Immortal. Have you tried Vader Immortal on? The Oculus Quest? Have you I, I haven't tried it. I have it. not yet. I think it's available for Rift as not. well. I don't know about Vive. You're on a HTC Vive, so I don't know about that. Yeah, but, I'm a Vive. I'm a Vive guy, and uh, I, I was gonna get. I have. I haven't gotten my new Oculus uh, uh, Quest. Quest yet, mm -mm. but I do want to get that. But I understand you can't use Quest in spaces, so I'm a little torn. Tricky. Yeah, anyway. yeah, it is tricky. And uh, yeah, okay. So that's that one, and I think there's another one from here as well. So again, we're now by the, the fountain. So again, the same technique, exposed for the sky, exposed for these walls here. And you really bring it out some beautiful. bringing out some nice colors. Let's just flip around here for a second. So you're going to absolutely love, love, love this new features that we have coming out. Um, actually, they're coming out. They launched uh, yesterday or the day before. I think so. There's a new version of firmware. I think I know what you're going to say. You and software. I know what you're going to say, and I am going to love it. <laughs> Both manual controls. Yep. That's love what number one. Yep, love it. And also raw DNG file formats. That makes so me you very can then happy. work with raw data, which even has more dynamic range than JPEGs. And then if you really want to get crazy and use multiple DNGs to do what you do, I think you're gonna be blown away. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, DNGs DNGs make make me very happy to have uncompressed yeah it's the uncompressed raw data from the camera basically isn't it yeah so we adopted what's called adobe dng yes. and dng stands for digital negative yep. and basically it is all of the digital information that the image sensor sees yep. before any processing so whenever you make a jpeg or uh, a tiff file doesn't matter any other file format other than a raw mm. you add you debay, it's called debay, or I don't want to confuse everything, but 
an image sensor has got red, green, and blue pixels yep. on it, and then they get debayered and turned into usable colors. Yep. And in that conversion, you can lose some detail. Absolutely. But if you do a raw DNG, which is that raw negative, it's everything that the sensor is seeing in its original form. Mm. So then you can apply multiple types of corrections to that if you don't like the results, which ultimately allows you to get better results. Yeah. So that's a that's a big win. And certainly if yeah. you've got the Adobe Creative Cloud, if you put it into Camera Raw, you then have raw data to work with. You can manipulate the image a whole lot more, uh, push. That's right push the boundaries really yeah. you've got you've got a lot more data to work with and you're less likely to get blown out areas or you can fix those more easily it's a lot more adaptable um, and certainly taking raw uh, images into into camera raw it, it, it's it's as good as it gets so you're dealing with the best quality images from the camera and that's always a great place to start yeah now for all of our viewers who are running out today and buying the camera not buying but trying to use the feature hmm. Yes, we can make DNGs. Yes, um, there is a workflow. However, we're still a week or two away, maybe three weeks away okay. from actually having the best stitching option within our software. Ah, okay, okay. But rather than waiting, we went ahead and released the opportunity to make DNGs. Yep. You can go into Adobe, you can pull that into other third party software to do stitching and stuff like that mm -hmm. and use it today. Mm. But we're also updating the Views uh, Studio software so that we can bring in and get a lot of those tools directly in the software. And then you have a final ah, stitched yes. video coming out the back as opposed to the fisheye. So, yes, I, I would like not to say too technical, but I would, just be ready for yeah, that. Yeah, I would like to point out I, I wasn't assuming that the stitching could be done in Camera Raw because you're absolutely right. It does come out as two separate fisheye lenses, um, or the output from from the camera. So um, until you get that the, the new uh, the new software, it, you know, updates in place. Uh, but but certainly uh, Adobe Camera Camera Raw, it, you know, is just great for for that kind of thing. So let me ask you a question: Does that mean that you will still be able to keep a, a DNG as a DNG before you when you export from the uh, Humanize uh, VR? studio or does it have to be converted to a jpeg at that point so the easiest thing for us to do and what you're going to see first yep. is an option to either do a jpeg yep. or an uncompressed tiff ah okay so this way you can keep all 16 bit of data although yep. technically the camera is a 14 bit camera it's not a 16 bit camera okay um but we'll work on keeping that and maintaining it as a uncompressed TIFF file so yes. you have all of the data that you can work with. Well, that's great. Yeah, but yeah. we will have done the initial con conversions, mm -hmm. okay? What we're trying to figure out right now, and not to get too nerdy on everybody on this whole sure. thing, is how can we stitch DNG and before it becomes debayered and anyway, yeah. all kinds of funky yeah. stuff. But we got a lot of really, really smart guys that are working on it. Yeah and know that uh, the image quality of this camera just continues to spike, spike, spike. Absolutely, I mean, the reality is I've been using JPEGs. I've got good results from JPEGs. DNG, I would probably still use the same technique. If it can be, if the quality can just be raised and, and then raised, you know, it's, it's, it's great. I'm already happy. So uh, it just means I've got even more options. I've got even more data to play with. You know, colors are less likely to, or, or whites are less likely to get blown out. I can kind of reduce, uh, you know, the, the, the intensity of uh, some areas, highlights, and, and um, you know, deal with shadows, because shadows are a big issue, because you've got less data um, to, to play with in the shadows, and that's where you get a lot of pixelation. So for me, that's that's great news. Yeah. Um, to reduce uh, and make those things slightly more easy to deal with is, is great. Absolutely. So... You know, some people say, well, why are you spending so much time pushing this image quality components? You know, mobile phones are small. It's hard to see. Hmm. But it, but we see more and more photographers who want to either make prints or make additional art. And quite frankly, for me, I'm a purist. I like to get the very best image hmm. quality. Hmm. But there's another reason. And the next thing I wanted to talk about, if you're OK with it, is I want to talk a little bit about Brumix ah. and like some really cool stuff on how to use VR and 360 content. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Well, when you mentioned Brumex, I visited them. They are based in Barcelona, 
Uh, and there are. Oh, they are. They, 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 not in this building. I think this is the. <laughs> is this the library? I think this is the library. I'm not very good on my geography. Um, it's it's an important building in Barcelona. <laughs> but um, <laughs> these guys are a little way out, but they are fairly central, and they're okay. a relatively young sort of startup company. Um, but they've they've sold a whole series of um, what they call their MK360 player. And let me just. I think it might be worth. I have some video. I think it might be worth taking a look at their promotional yeah, let's, video, yeah, let's throw a video for their for their player. Let's just check. Uh, let's just, now this has audio, right? So this does. should play back. So we should just be quiet. Yeah. Let me just uh, get this. Here we go. So let's just get that back. Let's just pause this on there. Let's just fast forward a little bit. In. Right, so they have created, BroomX essentially have created a product that will beam, project 360 uh, content onto a series of, well, walls. So you have to be in a, in a room and it will actually project uh, 360 content onto the walls. And in addition to that, they also have for things like hotels and different places, they have a, a bed that will also move. So if they, what they were demonstrating was uh, simulating movement of the sea, so the bed kind of moves and you've got sea all yeah. around you. And it was quite a, it was, a, it was an impressive experience. But not only that, I think they call it olfactory. Is it olfactory? Where you sense of smell? I think it's called ol olfactory okay, yeah. in, in ergonomics terms. Um, and they, they will, it will emit, they have a, a scent emitter. So when you're, bobbing along on the sea, you actually smell the sea as well. So you have the sky, you have the sea all around you. And uh, yeah, this this projector will, let's just, let's just see if we can get the full, there we go. So you've got the single lens here and um, you've got yeah. built-in speaker, which I think is this area. And then you've got the tweet, tweeter there. And I think it's on, a, it's on a stand as well. You should be able to see, there you go. So there's the oh, wow. there's the MK Player 360. I said 360 player before. It's, it says at the side there MK Player 360, and this is what Brumex have been working on. So when I went to them, I'll be honest. When I went to them, I thought they were content creators. So I saw there and I, I saw their stuff, and I thought, oh, they've got a lot of interesting stuff on their site. No, these guys create this product, and what was really interesting for me as a content creator uh, was was that it provides a great opportunity and uh, they were interested in me becoming a, a content creator for them. Not only in 360 video and, you know, related, uh, but also Ambisonics. And just to talk about Ambisonics for a second, yeah. just briefly, the definition is, if, you, if you've ever seen a YouTube video where the audio in 360, as you move around, the audio actually changes to, it, to the orientation. Um, so if you're looking at a speaker that's emitting audio on one part of the video, as you move around, uh, that could be a mouse scroll onto YouTube, or it could be you're immersed in the environment. The audio actually changes to make it appear as if the, well, appear, sound as if the audio is coming from that item or that object itself. So that's ambisonics, that the kind of movement that goes with immersive experiences of the audio. So it sounds like objects are actually emitting uh, the audio that they would 
look like they're emitting, if that makes sense. Is that, do you think that's a fair description? Yeah. No, I think it does make a, a really good description. The way that I always try to explain it is uh, if you've ever been to a planetarium or something like a big dome, right? Mm. That uh, first order ambisonics, because there's many different yes. layers of ambisonics, right? But first order ambisonics is like pinning the sounds around in that um, auditorium and you can tell directionally where they're coming from. Mm. So if I'm in a headset and I turn around and move my head, the sound moves with that so I can still tell where it's coming from. Mm. What's interesting for me is ambisonics in a still room, right? Yep. Is going to be like spatial 3D audio inside the room together with the uh, with the video absolutely. should sound absolutely amazing. So these guys are catering for every sense, the visual, the olfactory, and I better make sure I get the right definition there, but the sense of smell, uh, actual movement, yep. Uh, of, of items that you may be sitting on and um yeah the the, the audio as well so uh, you know literally as you as you move the video because as you may have seen on the video you there's a there's like a there's an app so you have an app and you can actually control what part of the 360 video you're looking at from the app and that will connect directly ah uh, so you're controlling almost like a touch panel yes where you can yeah that's right it becomes your control interface so when you're doing that as you rotate the video around, also the audio orientation will change as well. And that's where the ambisonics come in. So they are developing right. audio systems with, with manufacturers at the moment um, to, to, uh, to, to do that. So I can think of so many different amazing things for this. I, I've been doing some work very on the practical side of things in medical and healthcare. Hmm. Um, and Alzheimer patients yes. and being able to de-escalate patients. So imagine if uh, you're in a care facility and one of your residents becomes disoriented or confused or something, you could actually put them back into a familiar space. You could project mm. their mm. old home mm. or the neighborhood they grew up in or something that would help give comfort to them. Um, and, and without having to put on a headset, right? Just basically convert yep. their entire room to, to something. I, I love this technology. I mm. love the fact that you're involved with it. And hopefully you can keep uh, spending time with us and, and teaching you know. us more and more yeah, about let you know uh, how things what this company's go. doing. Mm, mm. Absolutely. So they were great guys yeah. to talk to. And uh, there, were several, there were several ways that I, you know, will be, you know, we planned on connecting. Um, certainly content creation and, and, and the ambisonics and um, yeah they have a great product I think I described it as Christmas for content creators you know Christmas for 3d 360 content creators it's it, it does provide a different angle it provides a different sort of um, use and a different experience for people creating 360 video so yeah it was uh, it was great to meet them well we've talked a lot mm -hmm. we've talked a lot about group viewing mm. we've talked a lot about uh, not maybe just you and i but just as an industry right um what we also refer to as a dome experience where you can come into a dome and you can do group viewing and stuff what i really like about this concept mm. is that you can take an individual space and convert it yes. into something without having to go through the cost of, you know, building an entire structure. And uh, if the, the the beamer is bright enough in there, or the you know the, mm, mm. the bulbs are bright enough and stuff like that, like it's going to just uh, basically dress that entire room in the full spherical world. Should be amazing. Yeah, I mean, I I was in that room and I I experienced all the different things. I mean, they got ambient lighting as well that goes with it, and that's ref you know programmed and reflects what you're actually viewing as well or, or assists i mean they have pcs i don't know if you've ever seen a pc or, or or a tv that will you know artificial intelligence will light up the background to kind of suit uh also i think i think on pcs the games that you're playing and the environments that you're playing in so it's you know i guess similar technology uh right let me let me just uh let me just shut this down i think i'm gonna right okay so that's BroomX, so BroomX.com. And uh, yeah, as I say, it was great to meet those guys. Nice. Well, we can put a link down below here to BroomX.com. Yeah. People can, can learn more about that. Mm -hmm. um, Simco.co.uk. Make sure you follow what Peter's doing in, in his work. Um, you know what I really like mm. about 
working with Peter is that he's willing to share what he's done, kind of his successes, some of his challenges along the way. Um, and having that resource for individuals to learn is so important for our industry. So, you know, my hat's off to you. Well, if I had a hat, yeah. at least I still have some hair. It's going away, though. I think, I, think, yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can have hats in Facebook spaces, but uh, but yeah. No, but that would be a nice thing to have, right? Yeah, have yeah, a hat. Yeah. At least I have glasses. Could, so that's, tell you what you can uh, do. Helpful. You could make a hat in uh, with using the pen tool. Because remember, you can stick things to your stick things to your face. That's true. I'm, that's true. I don't. I'm causing have a distraction. Any idea what that would look like, I'm, I'm causing a distraction from one your compliments <laughs> and two your overall message. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. No, that's great. So we've had uh, I think three or four of these sessions so far, and here's what I really want to encourage our viewers to watch. If you stayed here to the end, which I think is fantastic, thank you. Please, please, please make sure you hit subscribe, follow us, but more importantly. Put your comments down below on what you want to learn, what we want to talk about, how we can get better at providing tools to help you. Um, right now, we've kind of started at this very top level, kind of big picture, here's the things that we're doing. But I think both of us are willing to and can get all the way down to the gory details, mm. or we can even step back even further and talk big picture beyond what's possible today, like what may be possible in the future. Yeah. So uh, we'll leave it up to you to help steer that uh, that conversation. But, uh, you know, Peter, do you have anything else you want to add today? Uh, no, I think uh, I, I think I've been showing and telling. I mean, let's just I'll tell you what we haven't shown. The video I made as part of Views of, Views of London, where I'm traveling around the cafe. Let me just show you one other thing that I made whilst I was oh, down. Oh, that's do you, really cool. Do you want cool. to see this one? Okay, yeah. there's a bit of audio with this yeah, as well. Of so let's let's pop this in. So this was made. Just to give a bit of background, so there, there was a challenge. We all got challenged to go out and find, you know, interesting places to to, to show content uh, or to create content. So I was spending time with a couple of you guys, and I said, you know what, I'm going to go and I'm going to find a cafe that will let me put the Views XR on a tray and get a, a waiter or waitress to to carry that tray around and then see what it looks like. So went into the this pizza place uh, just off Carnaby Street and created this short video. So I think, uh, should we should we play out with this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, then wave goodbye. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> well, before you, yeah. These guys were very kind. Let me do this. <laughs> I don't think he spilled it all. Nope. Interesting the way he moves across the screen as the stabilization works. I, I thought it was a really nice effect. And yes, I did get a license for the music. <laughs> from, That's not your music? From Audio Jungle, no it's not. It's from Audio, it's a piece of music from Audio Jungle. It's more funky. My, my music's more measurable than this. <laughs> yeah, it was quite an interesting place. As I say, the manager was very yeah, kind. Was very kind and let me, uh, let me do that. table mm, I want pizza I want pizza <laughs> just there there's me just there and I'm hungry just right now I'm just there there's me on the next table <laughs> put it on the wrong table okay there you go shameless promo at the end there so let me just uh, awesome. let me just get that off there so yeah well done and I have to say I didn't see him spill any water no, no. so that was good it was good um I, again, it's just another example of like the really fun exploration you can do in virtual reality and mm -hmm. in 360 video and the creation of flatties where you can take and record everything around you and make a traditional 2D flat video mm. out of it. So, Peter, as always, it's a pleasure seeing you and uh, spending time with you in spaces. So we will come back again. Does this, does yeah, this work? Does it, it kind of hands? works. It's so, I, I don't know. I've yeah, never. It kind of does. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about this. <laughs> I, got, I got a thumb up. Who knows? Anyway, I think it's really good. Until next time, I'm Jim Malcolm with Humanized Technologies. And, and I'm Pete Simcoe, freelance designer, video producer, and photographer. <laughs> Remember all three. Wow. Hey, <laughs> hey that sounds really good. <laughs> all, right. all right. 
Bye. Bye for now. We'll see you in another week or two.